Last Premiere, I would say it's gotta be OG. OG are a team where you've thrown together, it's like a ragtag team. It's similar to OG and Dota, where they put together five players who maybe would have never found each other if not for certain circumstances. It has to be Na'Vi. They were the ones when they made the roster changes and brought in Guardian last year. I was excited for them, so I'm gonna stay excited this year now that they've added this new kid, Perfecto. Uh, and I wanna see this team succeed because it has one of the greatest players to ever touch Counter-Strike and a fantastic supporting cast, so Na'Vi for me. At the moment, it's probably Na'Vi because for me, this is just the early days of a team that has all the pieces to be really successful. And if Boomers grows a little bit more as an in-game leader, Blade has all the input that he can do from a coaching role, I feel like they'll have like a, a better balance. That could be the winning formula for him, but obviously we'll have to see how it goes throughout the rest of the year. Having these orgs come in who haven't been involved in Counter-Strike either ever before or for some time, it's great because there's a pedigree to these brands. They already have their own fan braces and if they can bring across any of the fans from the other games just to appreciate what we're offering here, you know, it's good from that standpoint. And to see them supporting Counter-Strike, it means, hey, we're still growing, we're not going anywhere. Obviously OG, the success and the way they did it in Dota was phenomenal. It's one of the most talked about things. Even if you don't follow Dota, you would have seen that. And with their Counter-Strike lineup, they've almost done the same thing by picking people from different regions and different nationalities and trying to bring together a powerhouse team. Now, their results aren't too good just yet, but given them more time, I'm excited to see what they can do. And I think it's just nice for Counter-Strike is that it's not just the same organizations, kicking a team, bringing in some new players, trying to make something work, and actually it makes it a bit more competitive in terms of what these teams can actually kind of bring to the table. Yeah, Evil Genius's buyout um, of NRG at the time was incredible news. Um, it's awesome, obviously, to see Counter-Strike prevailing, uh, to see Counter-Strike thriving and growing still to this date. So it's, it's exciting. And it's even more exciting when some of these rosters, like OG, on the other hand, who aren't an established team but are still backed by a massive organization, let's say Gen G as well. Um, it's just an exciting time for CS. The ideal map pool for me in 2020, well, I have to be, it have to include Seaside, I think, maybe a little cobblestone. Uh, no, but seriously, I think we, it's hard to say what maps that aren't in the pool should be in the pool right now. We've got a pretty stable map pool, one that players know and understand, one that doesn't have, maps that don't have a lot of glitches and tricks and stuff like that, so that's really important. But I think it would be healthy just to try to add in maps that we haven't seen before, work on those, and bring those into the map pool for the future. Let's take out Mirage and rework it. And before it comes back, I want to see a bit more season. Yeah, I miss it. The ideal map pool for me in 2020 would be to get rid of Mirage. I know they just updated it a little bit, but I, I think that that map, even with these changes, it's still going to play quite stale. Uh, and for me, I, I never liked playing it. So get that one out and, and bring in anything. Everybody wants Tuscan. Let's get Tuscan. Economy is the first one. Economy needs to be fixed because at the moment it's just become, okay, the Krieg's in there which helps with like the T side meta, but it, it, it's definitely not working out. Like teams can kind of get away with just buying every single round now. And while we get some more exciting rounds where you get these low buys and these force ups, I loved it when you would maybe once in a game, or maybe not even once a game, once in a series, you get one round where they have literally terrible pistols and a few grenades and still get the win. I am not a huge fan of the economy. I make that quite clearly known to everybody. I think that we've lost a lot of the ebb and the flow in Counter-Strike and the excitement curve. I would like it to go back to the way it was before, but that's not gonna happen. To balance Counter-Strike and make Counter-Strike even better, uh, I would say you need to have more credence for movement. There has to be an appreciation for it. Over the years, the limitations to movement have been heightened. There's been slowing down of ladder movement, b-hopping, getting nerfed, air strafing has never been good enough. All of those things need to be given more attention and love, and we need to appreciate movement, and we need to see more changes in favor of movement in 2020. I think that 2020 needs an additional nerf to the Krieg. Um, it was a sleeper weapon for so long, and now everybody knows exactly how powerful it is. We've tweaked the economy around it just so slightly that it's negligible. So I would like to see a hard nerf, um, you know, not, not into non-existence, but at least a bit more to return Counter-Strike to where it was before. I'll start with Oboe, who's on complexity. And the reason for him is he's only 16. He's 
already doing well. We saw all the damage complexities have managed to do this year anyway, beating down some huge names. But he's one of these, and this is what we're seeing with more young players. They're just fearless. Like they don't care if they're going up against Simple or Zyru. They're just running out and they're they're playing their game. They know they know how to actually just win the individual fights. And it's an air of confidence that they have that if they can do this against the tier one, as long as they're in the right system and they're being used correctly, you can have a lot of success. Rising star for 2020, it's gotta be Brokey. I think he's gonna do big things, and it's it's hard to pinpoint where he's at because he's surrounded by legends on phase. Uh, his name is not meant to be, you know, in the spotlight with them near, but his his well-roundedness as a player is incredible, and I think he's just got this like cool collected aura about him that's uh, really exciting to watch. So I'm I'm, pu I'm putting all my money on Brokey. I think 2020 is about if Zaiwu can be number one two years in a row. At this point, we look at some of the storylines that have ended last year, are still continuing on to this year, and Blast Premier is the first time we're seeing a lot of these teams play. But as an analyst, there's no reason not to assume that the teams that were great and the players that were great from last year will continue that on. And so, Zai was number one in 2019. Why shouldn't he be number one again? Let's see if he can do that.